Um, I'm living with my boyfriend and we're all having all sorts of drama. I lived in Portland, Oregon at the time and I am a Midwesterner. I'm not used to the city. So it was a horrible adjustment period for me. It was something that was almost too scary for me to do at the time. But anyway, I was really kind of codependent on, on my boyfriend. His name was Doug. And we were fighting a lot, so I ended up having nightmares at night. This one was just crazy. I remember it very distinctively. Um, I'm driving down a road. It's hazy out. It's rainy out. Anyone who lives in the Portland area, that's quite common weather. And it's curvy roads, which is another quite common feature if you live in Portland. And I'm just, you know, going around all these little areas. And I remember there was a kid in a striped long sleeve shirt and like dark jeans or black pants and he was on a bicycle that was like a 10 speed. It was too big for him. And he popped out on the highway in between two SUVs. And I think the speed limit was like 45. And we're going around. There's just absolutely no way that you see that this kid's going to be there. And he popped out right in front of this lady that was in front of me. She hit him. It was quite a tragedy. She was just devastated. And back in uh, 1994, there's no cell phones. So... She, she was hysterical. The kid was laying there, and I kind of figured the direction where the kid came from, and I sent the woman from the car across the street to knock at the neighbor's door to call 911. And it was just weird because I remember picking up this kid, and I don't know, he probably was eight or nine. His legs f- fit over over my arms. I cradled him, you know, and I was carrying him to the door where his house was, I assumed, in the direction right in front of the two SUVs. And I knocked on the door and the mother answered and I'm holding this child. And we're all teary because I don't believe he had made it at this point. But the most magical thing happened while I'm watching this woman as I started to glow bright golden color. And it was just crazy. And so did the child. And I just stared at this woman and I'm holding onto this kid and it was just, the brightest, goldest light I've ever, ever felt. And both of us were glowing. And then I woke up. I'm like, that is the creepiest, weirdest dream ever. I'm like, I don't know any of these people. Um, but I do remember the lady. Um, she was driving like a rusted out dots. And I remember seeing rust on the back of her bumper. And her hair was blonde and curly like this. But kind of dog tail, meaning it was f- fluffier. You know, at the ends here on the shoulders than it was on the top. Anyway, I I ended up telling Doug at the time about it. I'm like, this is a really weird dream. And I told him about it. And then we went on with our day. And a week goes by. And this is in real life now. A week had passed. And I'm driving around corners, just still fighting with Doug. We're having our problems. And I'm kind of turbulent emotionally, kind of going through all of these things. And lo and behold, here comes this kid (laughs) in between two SUVs. And that striped shirt and dark pants, and he was lined up perfectly in front of my front bumper, but on the uh, passenger side, not the driver's side. And I just flipped like that. It seemed like I went into oncoming traffic in which there were trucks coming. I managed to go in the other direction, come back, and it was like time changed. Something happened just like that. The kid went from being in front of my bumper to the sidewalk and I knew it wasn't human possible humanly possible it was like a glitch in time and I'm really shaken up because I could have hit that kid I should have hit that kid all of a sudden the kid went from my bumper to the sidewalk he's not in front of the road anymore I'm shaken I just went head to head with a possible semi managed to get back in the lane and not hit him I'm just like what the fuck and recognizing this kid from my dream And then I look in front of me, and the car in front of me is that Datsun, rusted out, perfect rust on the bumper, and that blonde woman was driving in front of me. It was the most surreal experience. I had to pull over and take some serious breaths. I felt like I did something to prevent that accident. I feel like the dream was far more than a dream, and when we glue gold, I think we changed what was supposed to happen. And I don't know if I lent this kid energy, but I do feel like I did something. I I can't describe it. And I don't know if anyone out there has ever had a dream like that. But it was the most unreal situation where 
it was total reality. And I've had several of those kind of dreams, nothing quite as substantial as that. And it really makes me ponder what our purpose is on this planet, that we are, we are more spiritual beings than we are physical beings. And I felt like my spirit said, no, this is not going to happen. I'm not going to let this little boy die. This is just not what should happen this time, this now reality. And I feel like I did something to change that path, to change that direction. So the boy survived. And I don't know. I, I'm very curious to hear from other listeners out there if they had anything like that, a premonition of a, a, a catastrophic event 